Well, as we mentioned, we are seeing a cautious start to this trading day after a recent rally that was fueled by the idea that maybe we're turning a corner on rate hikes. Fed speak seems to be leaving investors reassessing. Let's get more on the markets. Victoria Fernandez is chief market strategist at Crossmark Global Investments and one of our regular guests. Great to see you, Victoria. What do you make of the mood of the markets here in early November? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, John, because you had a market a few months ago that didn't believe what the Fed was saying and they're higher for longer. They kept doubting that the Fed really had uh, the resilience to be able to, to hold to what they were saying. And then they finally bought into that story. They kept hearing Powell and the other members of the Fed be strong in their statements that they were going to to be higher for longer. They were determined to bring inflation down. And it seems like a lot of that switched um, at the most recent meeting. You had many people anticipate or, or feel that Powell was being more dovish in his comments. He wasn't pushing back on there being higher rates. And then all of a sudden, the market priced in more rate cuts for 2024 and having them start sooner. So there's a lot of volatility, I think, in the markets as people are trying to determine what the correct rate path is going forward. Obviously, we don't have a crystal ball to see that exactly, but I think the market may be getting a little bit ahead of itself if it assumes that we are absolutely done with rate hikes. We heard Cash Kari, um already say that he's not even sure they're done with rate hikes yet. So I think there's still more to this story. Well, yeah, there, there certainly is. I mean, nobody knows where we're going, and that sometimes would probably include Fed officials themselves. Um, the, um, uh, the decision on what one does in the interim, I think, is what, uh, what, what we like to get perspective on from, from folks like yourself. What are you doing right now? How are you playing the markets? Yeah, so obviously clients have this question all the time when they're seeing the headlines that are going on. And we have to tell them, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture and how do we want to position ourselves. So you have um, some dovishness coming out of the Fed and other central banks, minus Australia, that did high rates um, today. But then you have issues in Washington. Is there concern that we're going to see um, a debt downgrade for the U.S. with the budget deals that are going on there? There's geopolitical issues. Issues. So we want to make sure we have some defensive components to our portfolio. You know that we've liked healthcare names for a while. We continue to like healthcare. They've been pretty beaten down this year. So we think you have an opportunity to go in and pick some names. Again, I think you have to be um, particular in the names that you choose right now. It's not anything within a sector. You have to get those with strong balance sheets. So a name like Cigna or Elevance Health are names that we think you could go in on that, on that side. But have a little bit of cash in your portfolio. You see the move Movements in the market, you want to be able to be nimble. So have a little bit of cash and take advantage of the rates that you're seeing in the fixed income markets. Lock in some of those shorter term rates north of 5% and get that cash flow for your portfolio, but maybe take a little bit and lock it in further down the curve. So as rates come down, which we think they will next year, you'll still have that nice coupon flow going in there. So diversify that portfolio and be choosy with your names. We put up a board with some of what you're um, thinking these days. And uh, we also highlighted the idea of looking for companies with strong balance sheets. I'm always curious about the metrics that professionals use, you know, with, uh, with the balance sheet, maybe current ratio, quick ratio, debt to equity ratio. There's all sorts of ways yep. of trying to measure the strength of a balance sheet. Any tips you've got for our audience? Well, those are actually really good examples of what you want to look at. And when we're looking at balance sheets, we want to look at cash positions. We want to look at in interest coverage. Interest coverage was actually the best performing factor over the last couple of months in the equity market. Those companies that had that cash position to cover those interest payments, that was your best performing factor. So you look at items like that, return on equity obviously is an important one, um, but you want to make sure they have solid positions to withstand any kind of volatility that's going in in the market. You look at our equity uh, model that our, our CIO Bob Dahl manages, we've got over 50 factors that we're looking at um, in order to determine those names that we think can be solid choices in the portfolio. But looking at cash positions, 
looking at the strength of their interest coverage, obviously quick ratios, like you said, return on equity, these are important factors to notice in the balance sheet. Before I let you go, I know there's a lot to be um, cautious of out there. Uh, we had a conversation uh, just within the last couple of days about the idea that maybe the Santa Claus rally came early. Usually that happens uh, in uh, in the back half of December. Uh, but the idea that after that three-month selling stretch that you talked about, investors finally sort of giving in to the idea of higher for longer interest rates, that even while we could have choppy performance, it would not be a surprise, actually, to see November in December ultimately be positive stretches. In your estimation, I know you talked a little bit about it, what, what ultimately would be the determining factor of whether that can happen? Well, you're right. November and December, there's that seasonality factor. They're typically the best two performing months together throughout the year. So we wouldn't be surprised to see um, some positive news there, some positive movement in the markets. But I think we've got to look at earnings. That's going to be key, in my opinion. We're not going to see the Fed make a move between now and the end of the year. It's going to be what corporations are saying and the guidance that they're giving. You look at the S&P companies that have given fourth quarter guidance, only 17% of those companies have raised that guidance for EPS. Even less, like 7% have raised it for revenues. That tells us there's going to be margin compression. That tells us there can be some concern in regards to um, payments of interest for a lot of these companies. And we're seeing high yield default rates go up. So I would watch earnings expectations. Let's see what happens when they report for the fourth quarter of this year. That to me is going to be key going forward. Okay.